All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to mix, um, not a value scale, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to mix four specific values, um, just a grayscale. Even though this is a color design course, I'm just doing, um, uh, in my design, I've decided to do an area where it's just black and white. Um, but it's not really black and white, it's just four different grays, some dark, some light. And this is the design here. So basically what I plan on doing is in this section here and this section here, I'm going to apply a dark stripe, a light stripe, a dark stripe, a light stripe, and so on. But I also want to uh, take advantage of this plane shift here. So the left side is going to be darker than the right side. And up here, it's going to be flipped. The right side will be darker than the left side. So it's going to look like a plane shift. So it'll look like a light source is hidden from one side and creating a shadow on the other side. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have this, uh, well, before I do anything, I want to have black on the exterior, not white, because white's going to be too close to, or the lighter value is going to be too close to the value of the paint that's here. And I want to somewhat outline it or um, make a contrast of some sort. So the value contrast will be really good. So if this side's darker, I'm going to have a number nine here. Sorry, I have all the stuff underneath here. And I'm going to put a number three. So it's going to be nine, three, nine, three, nine, three, and so on. And then this side, because I like to do two steps. So I'll call this a seven and a one, seven and a one, seven and a one, and so forth. And then up here, I'll, I'll flip it. I'll put nine, three on this side. And then on this side, I'll do seven, one, seven, one. Um, until I hit, the, until I finish this. Um, when I do paint this, I, I will just tape off the sections and then paint the nine three and the nine three on both sides. When I finish that, I'll tape off the seven ones and then I'll and I'll paint that. Um, and then I'm, I'll hit the last part of the design at the very end. Um, now, one more thing: a seven and a one and a nine and a three is not the standard value that's uh, you can find online or something like that. It is. Um, my seven is different than someone else's seven, but it's just a roundabout way of thinking um, in terms of value. So the, the reason why I want a nine and a three, so there's a big difference between the two values. So what I'm gonna do now is start to mix these up. This is what I'm gonna be using to make my scale to compare and contrast the values. This is what I'll be using once I do mix the values, but I'm gonna put that on all on the side now. And whenever you're figuring this out, again, put your, we're just figuring out the values right now, so I'm not mixing a lot of white paint. Um, put the uh, paint, uh, squeeze the paint out at the top of your palette paper. The reason being, because it will allow, this takes forever sometimes. Um, it, it allows you to utilize this entire surface uh, for mixing and etc. So what I like to do is just grab a bunch of white paint. Don't. Um, go in there and just touch it and try to make this little that value. Get a lot of white paint. Fill this brush up. What I usually do is I'll fill the brush up and then I'll kind of like roll the brush and squeeze it out of the furrow and then reintroduce the, um, the paint back in. And it's just kind of working the paint a little bit. And, I, and I'm going to take a little bit of this paint. I have no idea what's on there, so I'm, I'll take a little bit off and then take from it. And all I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to create my values. So I'm, I'll, I'll start off with the number one and then maybe I'll make a three. And I just want the one and the three because they're going to be adjacent to one another. I, I want the one and the three to be clearly different, like a two-step difference. So if that's my one, which I'm fine with that, I'm going to call that my number one. And I'm making this like this big swatch because I might have to match it. That's my number one value. Sometimes you can just, this is, I have to change this water, but sometimes you can just get a little, if, if the paint's getting dry, get a, dip it a little bit into the water. For a change it though. And I'm gonna get some more white paint. And right now I'm gonna try to make a number three. And I always go work from light to dark. Um, two reasons, it's easier to add dark value and adjust the paint darker. It's, you're gonna use all your white paint if you try to go from dark to light. Um, and you never really can achieve the color you're trying to achieve or the value. Uh, all right. So 
what I should have done, and I kind of forgot to do it, was I wanted to make a little bit of, um, I wanted to leave the pool of value here, which there's a little bit left there. Um, and I can kind of compare this value to that. And I think I'm kind of okay with this. Because remember, I'm, I'm skipping a step. So instead of like one, two, three, this is just gonna be one and a three. So, and again, this is gonna be my lighter end, but this is gonna be next to a, a nine. And the nine's gonna be pretty dark. So I think this is fine. Now, I'm hoping there's a lot of reflections around here. I'm just hoping that the camera can pick this up. Um, so that's a big value shift, I think. It's a one and a three, and I'm good with that. Now I'm gonna to start to make my uh, uh, Should I do a nine? And then a seven? I don't know, let's see. Because the seven's kind of like in the middle. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna use a lot of black paint. And the white that's already on my brush will mix with it. Yeah, I think I need to make a, a nine first and then I can go on a seven, which completely contradicts everything I just said in terms of going light to dark. But in this case, seven to me is just, it's too far in the middle to start with. Um, and I think I need to know what my darkest value is. So this is where I am right now. I'm just kind of look at it by itself. Um, yeah, I think I get a little darker than, than that. And never, never um, use black out of the tube and paint it in your, um, in, in those, um, on your illustration board. Always mix a little bit of white with it. Reason being is because the white will make it somewhat opaque and when you put the paint on, you only need to put one layer on. You don't have to put two or three layers on. And there's a couple paints like that, like um, uh, Viridian Green. You just can't throw Viridian Green on. It's a glazing medium traditionally and oil paint, and you can kind of put it on really thinly on top of things to ch change the color, but it's, um, it's designed to be transparent is what I'm saying. So if anything's transparent, then you're going to apply another color to it, like white, for example, will make it opaque when you lay it down, if that's what you're trying to achieve. And with this flat painting stuff, that's what we're trying to, to achieve. So I'm just gonna put this next to that. That's a big shift, right? Dark, white. I'm okay with this being a nine, okay? So I think I'll go with that being a nine. And then I'm gonna mix I'll just take this white paint that I had here. I'm gonna leave a little pool here and I'm gonna start to mix a little bit like right next to it. That way I don't have to put it here. We'll put it there to see if it's whiter because it will be, this will be the plane shift. And the nice thing about this is when I mix my values with this, all you have to do is match that and I'm good to go, and I can make my cups. And I'll try to make one cup in this video. I won't do them all because it'll bore everybody. So I can already see that there's a nice value shift between here and here. And it's about the equal shift between here and here in terms of uh, how much of all the step lighter and darker. So I think I'm fine with that. And then I'm just gonna paint it here to see if there's a nice shift between this and that. And there is. So you can kind of see that this would be a nine. This is a three. This would be a one. And this is a seven. Um, I want to get a little bit more white in there I can, but I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I think this is going to work. And to be honest, this is going to be a really bold um, contrast uh, compared to this like delicate color here, this really subtle variation of gradients. The dark black and white is really going to pop almost to a point where I'm nervous that it might take up too, attention, too much attention, but that's okay. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, since I, I have my um, colors selected, 
or values in this case because it's ivory black. I should have been a little more prepared and got my new uh, napkin thingy. And I'm just cleaning my brush off. I'm not going to use it now, but I'm cleaning my brush off. Um, the moment. Oh, I think I have one here. Perfect. Especially when you have a dark value like this on, on there. You don't want any remnants of this in your brush. It will, when you try to mix another color, some of it will come out and it will influence the other color, start to desaturate it. Um, you don't want that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix one first. And I've done this in some previous videos. Uh, you can keep this section here and put a new piece of palette paper down, but in this case, uh, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, I think that's plenty of white paint <laughs> for what I'm gonna mix. If you've seen my other videos, I mixed a whole lot here and I'd only used a little bit, so I have that much left. Uh, that's probably a little bit too much at the moment, but it's okay. I have enough for what I'm doing, I believe. And if not, I'll mix some of this with the other stuff. Um, and then I just need a little bit of a, a little more ivory black. This stuff's pretty potent, so that's probably all I need. Maybe a little more, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'll just grab a little bit here. And I'm gonna mix this up. Now, the other thing you wanna take into account is that this is starting to dry. Everything dries darker. Oops. <laughs> Damn it. Of course it goes right there. That was a mistake. So you can kind of see there's already got a little bit of a tint here. Um, I don't know if it's too much lighter or darker. I just don't know if it's going to dry. I'm just going to make it slightly darker. You do want a little tint to it because when you lay the paint down, you don't want it to be as white as the board for two reasons. One reason. Um, you want it to look different than the board. And the different reason is if you tape on top of it and it's the same value as the board, you can't really tell where you're taping, especially if you have to leave a little sliver left. So it's nice to have a little tint to it so you can differentiate the paint from the board you're painting on. I'm going to take a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, I think I'm happy with that. It's still a little lighter than there, but I know it's gonna dry darker. Um, I just thought that was a little too light. And I don't think I'd be able to see it on the board. So I'm happy with this. I'm just gonna mix it together one more time just so it's evenly mixed. And I'm trying to squeeze all my paint together. So I don't lose any of it. All right, grab this guy, scoop it up. Get it in there. Now the nice thing about this, since because we're uh, just mixing the same type of paint in terms of ivory black and white, you can just go right on top of that to mix the next one. Just using my finger just to kind of clean off the rim here. And then I'll put this on top. Again, don't forget to label this either with a uh, Sharpie marker or like I did before, I just put white or a tape on there and I put a number. I don't have any sharpie marker, but in the interest of moving quickly, I am going to try to mix one more. So the next one I'll mix is a uh, number three. Um, again, I only have so much white left and I know I have to mix two other colors because that, that's the color map that I have. Uh, let's just hope that's enough. I think that's enough because I think I want to save the rest, well, a good amount of this for the next one. And to be honest, the seven and the um, nine is not going to require too much white. Uh, so I'm going to mix this. Maybe a little bit more. Mm, I don't know how much yet.
I can tell it's not even close yet. Take a little more. Looks like it will be good number two, but I think it needs to be. Come on. I will say oil paint's a little bit more flexible to work with. This stuff dries pretty quickly. And I, I know there's a stuff you can buy to slow to the drying down, like retarder and stuff like that, but I don't have any of that with me. Again, if I'm not like dead on that, it's not the end of the world, as long as I'm close. This is what I'm using, I'm not using the color I mixed. This is more of a guide. All right, let's see what this is. I still think it's too light. It's pretty close because remember, it's gonna dry darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit more. It's hard because I can't tell exactly how much is on there, how much it will influence. And I hate going darker because then you gotta add more white. And then the anxiety level goes up because you're freaking out. You gotta buy more paint. I don't wanna do that. Uh, it's getting closer. I think I think I can go just a little bit darker. This is a forearm workout, that's for sure. I have a feeling that's going to dry the value that I want. And you can kind of tell, you know what? I keep inching to go a little darker every, every time. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. If I ever have to, you can always take some of this out and mix it in the other one. Um, Mix it in this one inside the cups if, if you have to make a small, small adjustment. And just stir it inside the cup just like you're stirring your coffee. All right, so let's see what we got here. That's pretty good. I think it's almost <laughs> too perfect to the value there. It's probably going to dry a little darker than that, but that's all right. I think I'm good there. Usually I'll angle this down. I don't know if you can tell, but I'll angle this down just so it, so when I do rub my finger on it, I don't take half of it out. All right, so. These are three. And of course, I'm just gonna keep going. And I'll make a dark one. Um, again, I think I'm gonna do the nine this time. And I'm just gonna squeeze what I think I need right there. That, is a lot of value. And whatever's in my my um, palette knife will mix in with this. And then I just see what I get, which really didn't affect it that much. As I'm just trying to stir this around, make it as even as I possibly can. I keep grabbing white that's all the way around. Uh, the exterior and prevents it from evenly mixing, but it's getting there. Um, I think I can probably use this white that's there. I might have to stir a little bit more out, but I didn't use that much white. I, I feel pretty good about that. I, I, I have plenty left for the other part of the painting project. All right. I think I'm pretty close. What I'm gonna do, take this <laughs> from there because I keep accidentally hitting more white and I just need to mix this up. Evenly. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna try this out. It's a little darker than I have there. Um, just fine. I just need a little bit of white. So if 
but it's not too much. It may have been too much. It's a little bit too much. I'm just going to take a little of this. This is where you start to do the dance. You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Too dark, too light, too dark, too light. And it can get frustrating. But take your time mixing. This is the most important part. Let's see what we got now. Uh, I think I'm okay with that. I'm just going to do a little bit more value or black. Remember, this is the darkest one. This is the nine. So, heck, if I, if I want to go darker, I'm going to go darker. I'll use all of this. I think I'm gonna change my mind right in front of you guys. I'm happy with that. I think that's cool. Just mix it in just a little bit more. All right, we got our number nine. <sighs> that will be the darkest value. Now, the reason I didn't go super, super dark is because I don't need much of a contrast on my painting. It's, it's pretty light. The values that I have there are pretty light anyway. Um, I could have gone a little darker there and still get the opacity that I wanted, but in this case, no. So the last thing I would do is I would mix up the um, number seven, and I would try to match that. Um, but I'm going to turn the video off now because I think you can figure that out on your own at this point until this video is not forever long. See you later.